how to make your own private proxy with ShadowSocks and Linode. The first thing you need to do is open up your browser and navigate to the following URL address. This URL address is my referral link and it will give you $100 free Linode promotional credit as a new user to try out Linode servers free for 60 days. I'll put my referral link in the video description below so you can easily click on it. Once you've clicked on my referral link, you'll be taken to Linode's sign up page. To sign up to Linode and get the $100 free promotional credit, you'll need to pick one of the three sign up options. The first option at the very top here is sign up with Google. Underneath is sign up with GitHub and underneath that is sign up with email. Most likely guys, you'll be signing up with email. So simply left click on email here and you'll be taken to the create a Linode account page. Here you'll need to enter your email address, pick a username for your Linode account and choose a password. Once you've done that, simply hit continue. And as you can see guys, there are three stages to this sign up process. The first stage is creating your account. The next stage is adding your billing details and activating your account by clicking the link sent to you by Linode to confirm the creation of your account. And finally is step three, the successful creation of your Linode account. For me guys, I'm not going to create another Linode account as I already have one. So I'm simply going to scroll down on this page here and left click on sign in. So I'm just going to put in my Linode details here to sign in. All right guys, I've put in my Linode account details here and I'm going to left click on login to sign into my Linode account. All right guys, so once you've successfully created your Linode account and signed in, you'll have your $100 free Linode promotional credits. As you can see guys, I already have two servers created on my Linode account here and I'm going to be creating a third and that is going to be my ShadowSocks proxy. To create a ShadowSocks proxy server, you can simply left click on create a Linode or navigate to the very top here to where it says create and left click on it and then select Linode, high performance SSD Linux servers. Once you've done that guys, you'll be on the Linode creation page here. As you can see at the very top here, the distributions tab has already been pre-selected. The tab that we need to select is the marketplace tab, which is right next to it to the right here. So I'm just going to left click on marketplace here. Once you've clicked on marketplace, you'll be greeted with many different Linode applications that you can install onto your Linode server. The app that we need to find from this list is ShadowSocks. So I'm just going to scroll down here until I find ShadowSocks. And as you can see guys, ShadowSocks is right here. To select the ShadowSocks app, simply left click on it. And as you can see guys, it is now selected. Continue scrolling down here until you see ShadowSocks options here. ShadowSocks password, which is required. So we need to choose a password for our ShadowSocks proxy. This password will allow us connect to our ShadowSocks proxy using the ShadowSocks client. So I'm just going to enter in a password here. Once you've chosen a password, Underneath, you should see select an image. Images is currently Debian 9. Leave that as it is. Underneath that is region. Here you'll need to select a location for your ShadowSocks proxy server. Simply left click on this arrow here and you'll be greeted with a drop down menu. Whatever server location you pick, all your internet traffic will come from that server location. So keep that in mind. As you can see guys, Linode gives you a bunch of different server locations to pick from. For today's video, I'm going to be going with the Singapore server here in the Asia Pacific region. So simply left click on it to pick that region location. Once done, continue scrolling down here. Underneath regions, you should see Linode plan. You have four different tabs here underneath the Linode plan. The current Linode plan selected is the shared CPU, which should be enough if you're just making a ShadowSocks proxy server just for yourself and a few other friends to use. And for this shared CPU plan, the specific Linode plan that I'm going to be picking is the cheapest one here, which is the $5 a month plan here. So I'm just going to simply left click on this circle here to select the shared CPU Linode plan. Once you've chosen your plan guys, continue scrolling down here. Next is Linode label. Choose a name or label for your ShadowSock server. So I'm just going to delete the default name here and I'm going to add my own. So I'm going to call this server ShadowSocks dash proxy. Once you've chosen a Linode label, you have the option to add a tag here. I'm going to leave that blank. Underneath that is root password. This password is different to the ShadowSocks password. The ShadowSocks password is what you'll use to connect your ShadowSocks proxy client to your ShadowSocks proxy server, which we are currently creating. Our root password is what we use to connect to our server remotely using a protocol such as SSH via an SSH client. Make sure your root password is different to your ShadowSocks password. So I'm just going to enter a root password in here. Once you've picked a root password, continue scrolling down. 
SSH keys, I'm not going to add an SSH key as we've chosen to go with the root password path here to authenticate into our server. Continue scrolling down, leave attach a VLAN as it is, and add-ons, I'm not going to add any add-ons such as backups or private IP. All right guys, once you've finished configuring your Shadow Socks proxy server, all that's left to do now is to create our Linode server by simply navigating to the right hand side here to the blue button which says create Linode. Simply left click on create Linode. Linode will then begin installing the Shadow Socks proxy server. As you can see guys, it says provisioning here and I'll be back with you once the Shadow Socks proxy server has finished installing. All right guys, as you can see, our Linode Shadow Socks proxy server is now running. Underneath the running status, you can see a summary of your server, which includes the number of CPU cores, the amount of memory, the RAM, and the IP address of our server, which is crucial to connect into our Shadow Socks proxy server via our Shadow Socks proxy client. All right guys, so once your Shadow Socks proxy server is running, the next thing we need to do is download the Shadow Socks client to connect to our proxy server. To do this, open up another browser tab and navigate to the following URL address, https colon slash slash shadowsocks.org slash en slash index dot html. Once you're here, you'll be on the Shadow Socks homepage. Shadow Socks is a fast tunnel proxy that helps you bypass firewalls. It's super fast, has flexible encryption, is mobile ready, is cross-platform, is open source, and is easy to deploy. If the Shadow Socks website is currently blocked in your country, then I'll put the Shadow Socks proxy client download pages in the video description below for the various different client operating systems that Shadow Socks provides. Again, guys, all the client links will be in the video description for your convenience if the Shadow Socks website is blocked for you. If the Shadow Socks website is not blocked for you, then simply navigate to the very top here to where it says download, hover over it, and then simply left click on clients. You'll now be brought to the client download page. As you can see guys, there are eight different clients for eight different operating systems. The first one is Windows here. You also have Mac OS, Linux, Android, iOS, and OpenWRT. I'm on a Windows computer, so the client that I'm going to be selecting is the Windows client here, specifically the GUI client, and I'm going to be going with the Shadow Socks-Win, which is hosted as a GitHub repository. To be brought to the Shadow Socks Windows client download page, I'm simply going to left click on the GitHub hyperlink text here for the Shadow Socks.Win GUI client. Once done, guys, you'll be brought to the Shadow Socks-Win releases page. At the very top, will be the latest release for the Shadow Socks proxy client operating system you have chosen. As you can see guys, at the time of recording of this video, the latest Shadow Socks proxy client for the Windows operating system is 4.4.00. To download the latest release client, simply scroll down to the very bottom of the latest release to where it says assets. And as you can see guys, there are currently four. The asset that we need to download is the one at the very top here, which is called Shadow Socks-4 point four point zero point one five dot zip which is roughly around four megabits in size to download this zip file simply left click on it if you're on windows windows will prompt you to pick a save location to save the shadow socks zip file as you can see guys i'm already in the downloads folder here which is the one i want the file name i'm going to leave it as it is and the save as type i'm going to leave it as it is to download this zip file simply left click on save the shadow socks zip file will then be downloaded onto your computer it's a very small file so it should be downloaded quite fast once it has downloaded, navigate to the bottom left hand corner here and left click on this arrow and then left click on show in folder to be taken to the zip files download location. The next thing we need to do is to extract or unzip this compressed zip file. To do this, you'll need to use an extraction tool. If you don't already have an extraction tool or an uncompression tool installed on your computer, I'll put a link in the video description to a video of mine titled how to use WinRAR on Windows 10 PC and how to extract or unzip RAR and zip files. If you do have an uncompression tool, simply right click on the zip file that you've just downloaded and select extract to and then the name of your zip file, which in my case is shadow socks dash four point four point zero point one five. So I'm just going to click on this option here. My extraction tool, WinRAR in my case, will extract the zip file to a folder called shadow socks dash four 0.4.0.15. Once done, double click on the extracted folder 
to open it. To launch our ShadowSox proxy client, all we need to do is locate the ShadowSox application here, which is right here for me. Simply double click on the ShadowSox application or exe file here to launch it. So I'm just going to do that now. As you can see guys, when you first launch your ShadowSox proxy client, new files will be generated in your ShadowSox extracted folder. All right guys, once you've got your ShadowSox client open here, the next thing we need to do is add our ShadowSox proxy server information here. Under server, the first option here is server IP. To get the server IP for our ShadowSox server, we're going to need to open back up our browser here, navigate back to our Linode dashboard here to our ShadowSox proxy server and look for where it says IP address here, which in my case is 139.162.3 Dot nine seven. To copy your IP address, simply left click on the copy to clipboard button here. And as you can see guys, it says copied and open back up your ShadowSox proxy client here and paste in the server IP. Next is the server port. As you can see by default, it's currently set to 8388. We're going to need to change the server port to 8000. So I'm just going to delete the default port here and type 8000 or 8000. Next, we need to enter our password. This password is going to be your shadow socks password, which you chose when you were creating your Linode shadow socks proxy server. Remember you entered in two different passwords. The first one was your shadow socks password and the second one was your root password. The one that we need to connect to our shadow socks proxy server through our client is the shadow socks password. So I'm just going to quickly type in my password now. Once you've typed in your ShadowSox password, the next thing we need to configure is encryption. As you can see guys, the current encryption is ChaCha20. We're going to need to change this encryption protocol by simply left clicking on the arrow here. Once done, you'll get a drop down list and the encryption that we want is AES-256. GCM. Once you've found it, simply click on it to select it. All the other configurations, guys, you can leave it as it is. Again, the main things that you need to add or configure is the server IP address, the server port, the password, and the encryption. Once you've configured all these options, simply left click on apply and then click OK. Once you've done that guys, if you're on Windows, navigate to the bottom right hand corner here to your taskbar and you should see the ShadowSox client icon. If you don't see the ShadowSox client icon like myself, that's OK. Simply left click on this arrow here to show hidden icons and as you can see guys, the ShadowSox client icon is right here for me. Once you've found the ShadowSox icon, simply right click on it. Once done, look for where it says system proxy and hover over it. As you can see, the current system proxy is set to disable, which means that we're currently not connected to our ShadowSox proxy server. To connect our proxy client to our proxy server, simply left click on global here and we'll now be connected to our ShadowSox proxy server. To check if you are protected and your IP address is masked by your ShadowSox proxy server, open back up your browser and navigate to any search engine of your choice. I'm going to navigate to DuckDuckGo here and search the following. What is my IP address? And then hit enter to search. And as you can see guys, at the very top of the search engine here, it says your IP address is 139.162.3.97 in Singapore, which is the server location we have chosen to create our ShadowSox proxy server in. And I'm just going to double check this IP address by matching it with what we have in our ShadowSox proxy client here. And as you can see guys, when hovered over, it says 139.162.3.97. And of course it says colon 8000, which is our port. The last thing I recommend doing is creating a shortcut for ShadowSox on your desktop. To do this, I'm just going to minimize my browser here and go back to the ShadowSox uncompressed folder here for our client. Find your ShadowSox application or the .exe file here, right click on it and then left click on create shortcut. Once you've created a shortcut guys, as you can see the shortcut is right here called ShadowSox-shortcut. Simply drag it onto your desktop. So I'm going to do that now by restoring down this window here and then simply dragging the shortcut onto my desktop here. And now it can simply close out of the extracted folder. And now when you want to connect to your ShadowSox proxy client, instead of having to open up that folder, you can simply double click on the shortcut on your desktop to open up the ShadowSox client. So once you've got your shortcut on your desktop, you can rename it to whatever you want. So I'm just going to rename it here by just removing the dash shortcut in the name here and then hit enter. Once you've renamed it guys, going forward to run the ShadowSox client, you can simply double click on the ShadowSox shortcut here. And the very last thing guys, before I end the video, I'm going to show you how to disconnect or disable 
your shadow socks proxy through your client. To do this, navigate again to the bottom right hand corner here to your taskbar and locate the shadow socks icon. Once you've found it, right click on it again, go to system proxy and left click on disable. And you're now disconnected from your shadow socks proxy. And that pretty much concludes the video guys on how to make your own private proxy with shadow socks and Linode. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, comment down below, and most importantly of all, subscribe to support the channel. I'll see you on the next video. Why is it so